can I just start out by pointing out for the record that Ealing Central in Acton was a Labour game in May. So, I mean, we've heard a lot of doom and gloom. Some of those things I'd like to refute in my contribution. So, I mean, the motion before us is that this House has no confidence in Her Majesty's uh, government. And even as a graduate of the other place, I'm honoured tonight to be following in the footsteps of some really illustrious predecessors in this flagship debate. Most recently, I think Hilary Benn was here exactly a year ago, standing here, so no pressure there then. Anyway, look, whilst this motion is considered annually, I would like to con contend that in October 2015, having no confidence in Her Majesty's government is something that's more relevant, more needed now, this kind of motion, more than ever before. Because we now have an exclusively conservative majority government who liberated from the shackles of coalition are pursuing, they're putting before the British people the most objectionable and extreme legislative programme ever put before the British people. And they're intent on ripping apart the whole post-war consensus that prevailed for so many years in this country between, between both sides. As a social scientist myself, I base my contribution on empirical evidence. So that's a combination of sitting through last week's Tory party conference and measuring some of what was said against what they are actually doing. And also from my post bag stroke inbox stroke uh, advice surgery sessions that as a rookie backbench opposition MP, I've not been there six months even, I can see the problems that people in this country are facing. And I was a candidate for 18 months before that. On issue after issue, this government has failed my constituents and our country. Cameron, the ex-PR man, may know how to talk a good talk, but the claims that he made last week rapidly collapse under any scrutiny of the policy meet of what the Conservatives are actually bringing forward to the statute book. So, I mean, take his speech last week, that passage uh, supporting equality from the PM. I mean, for someone on the left, what's in there not to like? Um, it was kind of encouraging for people like us. Historically, it was Labour who gave us equal pay in this country, gave us the minimum wage, all opposed by <laughs> the other side. You know, all ra major race relations acts in this country were put, put through by Labour governments. But then, kind of, if you look at what they're actually doing, these are just warm words. So, the immigration bill that went through Parliament this week. Um, even there was a lobby yesterday from my old union, UCU, about cutting English for speakers of other, of other languages um, that are offered these courses by Job Centre Plus to integrate people into society. Now, there's a real social benefit to things like that. They're slashing them. Um, uh, and, you know, they're vital for the skills deficit. And then there's tons of things we could say, praising the Royal Navy, search and rescue, operation one minute, and then withdrawing the boats the next. And Theresa May's pandering to anti-immigration sentiment, met, even met condemnation from the Institute of Directors for jeopardizing Britain's economic recovery. And all this at the same time as a hijab-wearing woman, Muslim woman, won the Bake Off. So, I mean, the Home Secretary's lambasting uh, of immigration is it was driven it was playing to the gallery driven by her leadership ambitions rather than the country and that i would say to you is what is cheap political point scoring because that's putting party first not country first and that is bad decision making and we all know that the contribution that immigrant people of immigrant backgrounds have made to british daily life culturally economically you know, even the, that old saying, coming here, running our government departments, winning our cooking contests, staffing our NHS, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It, it doesn't stand up. And that tough talking on immigration is not matched by action. They promised to get net migration down to the tens of thousands. They failed. It's risen to record levels. On the refugee crisis, the government's had to humiliatingly cave in to public opinion, the picture of the boy on the beach. Um, to a limited degree, they have shifted on that. And the Home Secretary also didn't mention anything about the police. I met in my constituency yesterday our chief superintendent, who told me that cuts in police numbers are leading to a completely demoralised force. And this is from the one-time party of law and order. Tories claim to be on the side of working people, but doesn't correspond with robbing three million low-paid families of £1,300 a year with the working family tax credit cuts 
or even the draconian trade union bill, which has been opposed by a load of unlikely uh, suspects. So my honourable friend, I guess tonight, Vince Cable is one of them, who's also from the other place. Uh, Conservative David Davis have likened that legislation to something out of Franco-Spain. And there's a, there was a letter, I'm sure you all read the Times Higher Education Supplement, 70 academics from business schools. You know, these are people who teach management science have said it's retrograde for industrial revolution. Uh, really? Okay. Um, so, you know, Amnesty International, they're used to defending torture victims abroad rather than British people in the workplace. All these people have opposed that. And your generation, Kate put it so well, faced bleak prospects. This gov uh, actually, the last government scrapped the educational maintenance allowance. The so-called national living wage will not apply to the youngest ditto housing benefit, mental health services in crisis. As a result, there's increasingly large gaps for young people to fall through. And youth was meant to be a lifestyle phase, of, you know, carefree time. But, I mean, negotiating youth nowadays is becoming akin to a tightrope walk um, for a trapeze artist with that safety net getting smaller and smaller and in danger of disappearing. Junior doctors are in revolt. 20% of our science budget comes from the EU. Things like incurable diseases, we need collaboration between different nation states, part partnerships to do that. But Cameron surrendered to his activists and UKIP in granting a dangerous referendum that could see us leave the EU, risks pulling the plug on all that. And again, it's bad government. It's playing to the gallery, not the country. Uh, Professor Andrew Hamilton warned last week, that he's the vice chancellor of this university, of the dangers of Tory cuts to research budgets to this university. Even the Lord Chief Justice has said that the government plans to reform legal aid and charge court fees are endangering access. He said it threatens a core principle of Magna Carta, this thing that we're all celebrating so recently. 50 magistrates have resigned over the requirement to pay up to £1,200, the net effect of which will be people lead, um, pleading guilty. Um, so, you know, no government who's presiding over that could surely command the confidence of this house. On housing, we've made zero uh, progress. You know, this is meant to be the party of homeowners. They should be ashamed of themselves that we've seen peacetime house building to an all-time low. I think lowest since the 1920s. Um, no, because I've been told I will make progress because uh, the clock is against me. I've seen all that. Um, Anyway, yeah, I mean, in this budget, some of these things, this emergency budget, and doesn't the word emergency just suggest that there is some sort of a crisis? Um, so in that budget, they've said that there's a 1% rent cut for people, social housing tenants. Sounds good, but if you think about it, people like housing associations, they need those receipts to build. The Office of, Bu of Budget Responsibility says that will mean 14,000 fewer homes built over the next five years. Labour in 1945, that government founded the National Health Service in 1948, at the time opposed by the Tories. There is a pattern here, ladies and gentlemen. And this lot, with its parceling off, privatisation, sell-offs, Andrew Lansley's Health and Social Care Act, by making the NHS just another provider, not even the preferred provider, is another nail in the coffin. I mean, I could go on and on um, the way that they... Uh, Kate pointed out how child poverty in the manifesto, it was said it would be eliminated. Suddenly, two months later, the whole targets and measuring are scrapped. In my constituency, two accident and emergency wards pre-election that were supposed to be safeguarded have gone. They've been completely axed. Um, you know, tax, cuts, uh, tax breaks to the rich at a time when wealth equality continues to grow. These are people that don't care about tax avoidance. Many of their funders are tax avoiders. Um, OK, I'll cut about what we'll do. So yes, Theresa May once famously warned her conference about being the nasty party. And last week, it looked like she was really relishing it and trying to live up to that tag. And you know, the gentleman opposite was trying to smear our leader I mean, the truth of the matter is David Cameron used his speech to personally smear and denigrate Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn used his to personally ask Cameron to save a boy's life in Saudi Arabia. The contrast could not be starker. This pig awful government does not deserve the confidence of anyone in this room. 
as they only look after their own, not the many. So, you know, how can we trust Cameron? He doesn't even tell us which way he'll vote in that referendum. I urge you to support the motion that this House has no confidence in Her Majesty's Government.